Hello and welcome back to the third part in this series of videos about the USB Mega Drive dev kit. Uh, so again, I recommend that you watch this full screen in at least 1080p. Um, so to recap, last time we uh, we showed how to uh, use the USB Mega Drive dev kit cartridge to talk via USB back to the PC running GDB, uh, and in the process debug and uh, and train. Um, a commercial game, Sonic 1. Uh, so we gave Sonic infinite lives uh, uh, by patching the original the original ROM. Uh, but that's all very well and good, but what happens if you wanted to write your own homebrew development stuff, your own demos and games for the Mega Drive? Uh, well, that's exactly what this menu program is, actually. I, I, wrote, I wrote this using, uh, using a very cool uh, set of libraries um, that was written by a French guy called Steph. Um, it's called the Sega Mega Drive Dev Kit, uh, SGDK. And uh, basically it's a, it's a library that abstracts away all of the Mega Drive hardware and allows me to, to just write, you know, write, write a really simple, simple application like this that, that gets a list of, uh, of game ROMs off the, off the SD card and, uh, and prints a menu up. And allows me to scroll through it and so on, um, but uh, so I mean I guess we we could just do exactly the same as we did before with Sonic. We could start the the GDB bridge running um, and then run the run the the DDD debugger, and again we've we've got this list of um, list of instructions. Uh, we can just step through them one at a time, and we can you know set breakpoints and have a look at memory and so on. Uh, but this. Um, this code was written in C. This menu program was written in C, but the the there's no there's none of the original C identifiers visible here. Uh, you know, having to de having to debug C code using the target assembly language is is actually quite quite challenging. I probably wouldn't be able to do it, even though this is my code. So um, a much better way of doing this is by using the actual uh, the actual debug output from the compiler. So there's the actual source code, um, and I've got two scripts, one, one of which which um, generates the release version, which is the one that's loaded off the flash chip um, on, the, on the FPGA board, um, and the other one is a, is a debug script, and the debug script will, will, will generate a, uh, a version of the, of the code that has debug, debug information still, in, still included. So I can run the uh, the debugger as I did before, but this time I'm going to give it the menu.elf file, uh, which has just been created. So it looks pretty similar to how it was before. You've got the machine code window here with uh, with uh, with a dump of what's what's going on, except it's actually printed these hints um, of of the the symbols that that these these addresses actually mean. So it's immediately more more useful, more um, you know, more, more more human friendly, but it's also given us a complete source source code window. So um, now, if I step through this code, it, it doesn't step through the machine code; it steps through the actual the actual C source code. Uh, so I can uh, scroll down a little bit here and set a breakpoint. Let's set breakpoint here, and I'll set another. Well, I'll I'll just go continue until here. Um, so this is the quick sort routine. So initially, when when it loads all of the uh, all of the files off the um, when it gets a directory listing of the SD card, uh, the the files come in any kind of order. You know, it's the it's basically the order that they were written to the written to the to the SD card in. So the first step is to is to run this quick sort, which will sort them into alphabetical order. Um, so let's show this backtrace window. So the backtrace window. Will show you what the uh, what the current call stack is. Uh, so at the moment there is no call stack; it's just running in, in in main, which is at the top level. But as soon as I step into this code, it's now in in the quick sort routine. So now I've got two separate stack frames, and I can switch back and forth between them. Uh, let's put a breakpoint here. Um, so QuickSort, as you may be aware, is a, is a, um, a recursive algorithm. So it basically uses a divide and conquer approach, splits the uh, the, the array that needs to be sorted into two, uh, and then sorts the left-hand one and then the right-hand one, and then recurses down until it's only dealing with um, arrays of length one. Uh, so if I do continue now, it will get to get to that uh, get to that call of QuickSort. So remember, we've still only got two stack frames. But if I if I do cont again, it's going to then call itself and, and result in a, in a in a third stack frame and a fourth and so on. 
So um, at, right at the right at the top, um, the end index um, is is zero x thirty one, which is the the hex number of uh, of actual game ROM files I've got on the SD on the SD card. So if I then step down to the next uh, the next level, the end index on the, in this case is two e. So it's it's partitioned the array uh, uh, partly and and then step down again and it's it's partitioned the array further. And I can I could just keep going like that and it would it would do it would generate more and more stack frames and and so on. Um, Let's delete this uh, this breakpoint and continue. That will get us back to the breakpoint that I originally put in the main function. And then I can continue stepping through. Um, it gets a bit boring clicking this uh, this next button. I think there's a there's a shortcut. Yeah, there there it is. F6. So if I just press F6 now, I can I can step through the code, and it's pretty nippy. Um, and you can see when it eventually gets to the point where it starts adding. Um, where it starts listing the the contents of the ROM. And that's it. Um, so yeah, I mean you can use all of the same tracing and dumping capabilities uh, of the uh, uh, in uh, that we showed in the in the commercial example um, in your own code. And you know, you can you can hover over these things and find out what the what their current values are and so on. Um, so it's uh, it's it's pretty usable. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's the end of this uh, this three part series of videos about the USB Mega Drive Dev Kit. Um, do leave a comment below. Uh, let me know what you think. Um, let me know if you want me to uh, demonstrate anything else about the about the machine. Um, and uh, yeah, um, thanks for listening. And see you guys later.